All right, everyone, it's Friday, and what does that mean? That means manufacturing e-commerce success. I'm one of your co-hosts, Damon Pastalka. That good-looking guy right over there is Kurt Anderson, co-host. I'm going to let you take it away, Kurt. Damon, thank you, brother. Happy Friday to you, my friend. How was, Did you have a good week? How's everything going on your end? It's just fine. A little snow, but nothing other than that. Hey, man, just... Man, you look good today. You know that? You look, you feel as good as you look. Man, you are well rested. All right. So, hey, it is an honor. It is a privilege for this program today. I'm like, I'm like the proud uncle right now. Like, I'm just so thrilled and excited. So great. Couple intros here. So we've got the founder, the owner, the 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 brainchild of Ellie Day Activewear. Ellie, happy Friday. How are you today? I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, hey, what an honor and privilege for you. Great manufacturer. You have wonderful clothing that we're going to be talking about today. You lined with IMAC, which is the MEP Manufacturing Extension Partnership of the great state of Illinois. And we have a wonderful representative from IMAC today. Cameron, happy Friday, my friend. How are you today? Hello. I'm doing well. Happy Friday to you guys, too. So we, Damon, th- this is a big event today. So guys, happy Friday. You're out there. Drop us a comment. Let us know that you're there. You absolutely want to connect with Ellie. You want to connect with Cameron. I've dropped their LinkedIn profiles in the chat box here. So connect with these guys. Cam- Damon, Cameron is our first Gen Zer on the program, man. I know yep. I'm like a little nervous about it, but yeah. Damon, how's that feel hanging out with, with, you know, not young guys? What, what do you think of that? Not young well, guys. I, I think you're more excited about it than I am, but yeah. <laughs> to be the first Gen Z on your show. We are definitely more excited about it. And I, and I wouldn't blame you. You know, I told her, I'd like Damon, this is like her, her hanging out with her, her bad uncles or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, couple old guys. So anyway, all right, let's dig right in. So Ellie, uh, entrepreneur, you're in the wonderful city of Chicago. Fashion and entrepreneurship runs in your blood. So my first question for you today, I'm going to go back in time a little bit. As a young girl grown up in Chicago, who was your hero? Who was your hero as a little girl growing up in Chicago? I mean, Hero is a big word, but I feel like it's always those maternal figures. And so for me, it was my grandmothers and my mother. Mm -hmm. Um, They were the people that I looked up to the most and also were the most inspirational. So... Awesome. Nice. Okay. And how about, how about, and we were talking, then it sounds like entrepreneurship runs in your family. Talk, let's go a little deeper. Like grandma, didn't grandma have a business if, I, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah. So both, one grandmother had a retail store uh, called the doll shop in Hinsdale and they did like preteen clothing um, kind of before jeans became the thing in the seventies. And then the other grandmother was an interior decorator. And I think that's how my parents met as the grandmothers were working for with each other on different projects. Mm-hmm. And then my grandfather um, also had a clothing, a gentleman's clothing store, which I laugh now. Cause I'm like, well, he probably carried the golf clothes. <laughs> so, yeah, right. yeah, he probably did. <laughs> exactly. So fashion entrepreneurship runs in a family. You mentioned mom's a hero. What, and what's mom's name, by the way, Kiki. Well, Kiki. Laura, actually, Kiki's a nickname. Everybody in my family has nicknames. So. All right. Well, hey, we'll give a shout out to Kiki, and we're talking about, <laughs> oh, she might have to be working with you tomorrow. So we want to give a big hello. <laughs> don't tell her that. <laughs> big hello. Hey, don't, don't. All right. So anyway, we'll move on. <laughs> Cameron, I'm going to come to you with the same question. Who was your hero growing up? I think my hero would be, and I think me and you talked about this um, another time, is my aunt who also worked at IMEC. Uh, She worked at IMEC for 22 years, which is almost the same amount of time that I've been born. Um, She was an assistant director of information systems, but she really inspired me with her hard work and her energy. So I would say she's my hero. Oh, that's a great question. The great answer and big shout out. Boy, just wonderful uh, mentors, great leadership, and just having those folks that pave our yeah. path ahead of time. So again, guys, happy Friday. We're here with Ellie Day. We are here with Cameron from IMAC. See John Buglino's John's here. in their house. Hey, John. Okay. Anybody with me? Out there? Yeah, whoever's out there, drop us a note. Drop I want to comment. connect these guys here today. So Ellie, let's go into it. So you... Uh, uh, University of Illinois, I believe you're fighting, fighting the line eye, and then just really paved the path down that uh, fashion uh, 
led your whole career towards fashion. I mean, like everything you go on your LinkedIn profile, you know, Banana Republic, uh, Neiman Marcus, everything that you did is really uh, Betsy Johnson. Everything was towards fashion. Just, you know, how did that hit you at such a young age? And just talk about how you knew exactly what direction you wanted to go. So the grandmother with the interior design business, she had these amazing pens that every, every color in the rainbow and when I would be at her house, I was allowed to sketch. And so that started really at a very young age, um, just sketching the clothes. And maybe one day I'll embarrass myself and put, I still have some of this. She, she kept them all in a binder. So I had like wow. the LED day work line, the LED, you know, so that yeah. started young. Yeah. And then um, U of I did not have a fashion design program. So I went into fashion merchandising with a minor in costume design and then kind of switched into their advertising program that all of that experience just kind of kept snowballing. And when I got to New York um, for an intern, an unpaid internship, I was able to stay on my sorority friends couches while I was there. Um, It was just this amazing opportunity that then while I was there, they were able to bring me into a position. And it's just kind of, I just kept working towards the goal, which I, I felt like was always to have my own line, but I wasn't like, calling myself an entrepreneur then. I didn't really understand that aspect of it until now. <laughs> until now. So, so, so would you say it was just really feeding that just uh, unapologetic passion towards fashion? Just like you were just all about like, that's the that was just everything about you or what? how would you describe yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, it started when I was young. I mean, from a like performance um, based, like theater programs and dressing up friends and filming style videos in the middle of Champaign, Illinois. <laughs> we didn't want to like, we were at like Gadzooks trying to like pull product. Um, but yeah, it was always play-based, um, which I now, when I reflect on like why I enjoy the golf and tennis so much, it's still that play element. It's that passion. Right. Um, and I just have always liked design. And then my medium has always been clothing. Right. Okay, so you found yourself crashing couches, couch yeah. surfing in New York, yeah. and then you end up in LA, if I'm not mistaken. Talk a little bit about how you uh, transitioned your career there and what that what did that look like? Yeah, so when I worked at Betsy Johnson, I was there for almost five years. Um, it started off as an internship, and then they needed someone to run the sample and production room. Her sample room was what most like independent designers would consider their production scale. I mean, we were making duplicates for overseas. We were making, you know, all the sales samples. Um, She did 35 bodies a month and it was, we were turning out a lot of product. Um, It was the most fun I've ever had. We had fashion shows. Betsy herself had television crews showing up to interview her. She's the most down to earth person. She's so sweet and worried about how her interns and everyone on her staff was doing at all times. Um, she was just, we also took care of the dog too. I mean, like there was like, there was a bit of celebrity about her. So, you know, we, we all got to try different things. I did like sourcing and production management, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then I felt like I needed to move to gain, like, First of all, we weren't paid a whole lot. <laughs> so we were in New York yeah. and it was the middle of a snowstorm. And my husband now, he and I were dating at the time. He's like, hey, I get this job offer in L.A. And would you want to go out west? And I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, there's all these designers out there. I'll go work for them. Um, and so, yeah, we just up and moved. I mean, it was pretty of, of the moment. And then um, last, when I got to LA, I would freelance for other designers. Turns out there wasn't as many small designers there. It was like big, big companies doing overseas production or teeny tiny designers that were like, you know, I would come in freelance for them. So I actually went back to school then as well to work on like the pattern making part yep. um, of the design background. And then um, yeah, we got married and we had our first kid and I was like, this is it. This is when I launched my line because these babies sleep 18 hours a day. It says so in this book. <laughs> so that was rough. <laughs> Isn't that awesome, Damon? You know, like what's yeah. the first thing that comes to mind? Hey, I'm having a child, therefore start a business, right? Yeah. Like who, who, who doesn't equate This is what right? I've been waiting for. That's right. 
So yeah, we um, moved back to Chicago with um, right before our second child was born. Cause my family is still here and they are like my backbone. Um, so we moved back and then had one more. And I, during this time, my trunk show business is just getting fancier and I'm doing more evening, more red carpet. And all of a sudden I'm making these white cocktail dresses and I met a woman who had a bridal shop and she's like, hey, I need something for brides that don't want like the big meringue dress. So, you know, would you be interested? And that's, that's how I ended up in bridal. Um, I started, we joined a golf club and I decided that at 40 years old, I was going to start learning how to golf right. because if my husband was going to be on the golf course away from kids for four hours, every time he went golfing, I wanted my time too. So yeah, yeah. I had no idea I would love it. I really, I love the women that I've met through golf and um, I loved everything except the clothing. And I kept going to like the PGA superstore and like wandering, like digging through racks thinking this can't be it. Like everything I've ever done in life, I've been able to find clothing that I liked or at least close enough. And this, I just, so, um, but I didn't know anything about sportswear or knit fabrics. <laughs> I've always worked in wovens. Um, and then COVID hit. So I was like, all right, well, all my brides have canceled all of their weddings. And so I just started, um, I'd had a couple pieces that I had started. And so I just kind of put my foot on the gas and it launched um, April 1st, 2021. And I launched with like, 10 samples that I just took, you know, cruddy pictures. I still do that. I still take cruddy <laughs> pictures on my phone and post it on my website. And then um, people ordered. And so like the first shipment was like July, but we made everything here in Chicago. And I was super proud of that because that was what I couldn't find. You know, I couldn't find anything that, um, of that quality. Um, I did finally find like Tory Burch has a line and so like I, I've since found more that I kind of see that customer liking and stuff too, but right. it's different. Okay. We, there's a lot to unpack right here. <laughs> Sorry. No, that was phenomenal. That was a great. So, Hey, I'm going to give a shout out. We've got Michelle Fawcett, your colleague, Cameron is with us today. So Michelle, yep. happy Friday. We love Michelle. She's been on the show multiple times and she's a fierce advocate for manufacturers at IMAX. So Michelle, Happy Friday. Sending lots of love to you, my friend. We've got Nicole Donnelly here. Gail is on the program. So Gail is our guest on Monday. Gail, hello. Thank you for joining us today. Nicole, thank you for starting this. And so what's absolutely awesome, a couple of things that I want to hit on, Ellie. And then Cameron, you're you're on deck. I want to we're going to talk a little yeah. bit about IMAC. So, but you start your business when you have your first baby, you have things rolling, and now COVID hits and you take a pivot. I mean, so many, this is so relatable to so many people where like, boy, COVID threw everyone a curveball. And the thing was, it was consistent, you know, like it wasn't like, oh, well, the, the economy hit this industry or yeah. it hit the, you know, I, I got caught in this wave, like the pandemic hit everyone. Yeah. What was, walk us through, like what was going through your mind? You're we like, man, I need to make a pivot. Did you think about, you know, do I find a job? Like what made you think about pivoting to, you know, I'm going to keep moving forward, but I want to go into the sportswear line. I think it was knowing that the whole world was shopping online. Yeah. And I felt like bridal was the last thing that I could sell online. And so that was kind of like the closure. And I needed that closure to see an opportunity. And I know that like a lot of people talk about that, but it was very true. I really, there was like, I went on like, I remember the day I went on a nice long walk and I was like, I guess I'll just be home with the kids. But there was so much downtime during that period. I spent a couple months making masks for a local hospital just to keep my hands busy. Yeah. But I definitely, I am, I need a lot of projects. It's just the way I function. And so I just, I had, I had started to try to do a golf squirt and a new version of a women's golf shirt already. So like it wasn't totally started because of COVID, but that just accelerated it. 
that in, in, and on your LinkedIn profile, you have a great story that, you know, your, your friend just smoked a drive down the fairway and she turned to you and said, Hey, Ellie, why don't you make something that would be like co cool and comfortable for women to wear? Right. It was something like that. Yeah. She told she's a banker and she was like, you know what we really yeah. need, we need better golf clothes. And I yeah. was like, Oh God, I don't know how to do that. You know, like immediately <laughs> it was all the walls and she gives me a hard time about it. Every time I see her, she's like, remember when you said no, <laughs> <laughs> I that was the so one. Exactly. Is, I'm just picturing her just smoking one right down the fairway. Yeah. And she just turns you and says, Hey man, what, what about some like women's wear? So, yeah. all right, Cameron, let's come over to you, my friend. So we're talking about that, you know, uh, you went to Illinois state, if I have that correct. Yep. And so interning at IMAC, you shared that your aunt, what did, what did you met your aunt's name? What's your aunt's name? That's your hero. By Kathy Tunney. Kathy Tunney. So Kathy, shout out to our dear aunt, Kathy Tunney. <laughs> Wonderful advocate for manufacturers, worked at IMEC for many years. So so for folks that are joining us, uh, share, and we're going to get into how Ellie reached out and, and connected with IMEC. Share with everybody, what is IMEC? What is the Manufacturing Extension Partnership? So if you haven't heard of IMEC, we're a team of industrial improvement specialists with a goal to ignite manufacturing excellence in Illinois. Um, IMEC is a part of the MEP National Network, which is a unique public-private partnership that delivers solutions to U.S. manufacturers, fueling growth and advancing U.S. manufacturing. There's one version of an MEP center in every state, while IMEC is the official MEP rep in, of Illinois. Nice. Excellent. So here's my next question for you. And, and as, as you spot on said, Damon and I are very thrilled to have a Gen Z <laughs> on the program today. Let's talk about, you know, uh, you talk about your aunt, you admired her, looked up to her, you really respected what she, her whole career at IMEC. What led, you could have gone many different directions. So even though Aunt Kathy was a big inspiration to you, what really inspired you to bring, to kick off your uh, new career into the world of manufacturing and into the Manufacturing Extension Partnerships? So just graduating from school, you know, I knew I had a love of marketing. Obviously, that's what I went to school for. And I had honestly no idea what industry I wanted to go to. You know, I was exploring. And um, like I said, my aunt mentioned like, hey, I'm ex hiring a marketing specialist. And at first, you know, I was hesitant. She had big shoes. I had big shoes to fill. Um, and it was really just not at first the industry, it was just the people that I talked mm -hmm. to at IMEC. You know, they were super passionate about manufacturing. They're super passionate about IMEC in general. And I just knew from the start that I wanted to work for IMEC. Well, that is awesome. And thank you for bringing your talents. Now, please, Cameron, there's a rumor on the street. I would love for you to confirm. We always hear that all the cool kids from college are going into manufacturing. Can you, can you confirm that? Is that a rumor or is that a fact? Oh, yeah. It's the new thing now. <laughs> All the cool kids are going into manufacturing. There we go. So, hey, you know, if you're out there, you're college and you're thinking like, man, manufacturing, are you kidding? There's all sorts of wonderful opportunities. I know, Cameron, you're great. You're Google Analytics specialist, HubSpot. So you bring all sorts of wealth of talents and you're thinking like, well, gee, what does HubSpot and, and Google Analytics have to do with marketing? Or I'm sorry, with manufacturing has everything to do. And so, Ellie, that kind of brings us back to you. Let's talk about, so you get things kicked off. It's April Fool's Day 21. We're right in the heart of COVID. Yeah. And you decide to take a leap of faith and you're going to go this direction with this new COVID baby of yours, LED Day Active Wear. So let's go into like the early stages. What did 2021 look like to you as you're getting this business off the ground? Um, it's a lot of tapping friends, friends of friends, and they're golf pros. Um, it was, you know, I kept showing them things and I did a lot of research with those friends of friends and, you know, trying to make new sketches, adjust patterns, things like that. But um, it was so refreshing too to have such a welcome audience. It was, um, I had golf shops reaching out to me, oh, nice. whereas Ooh. I've never, I've never had that experience at anything in fashion where, you know, it's just always like, and, and it's, it's not like a windfall of orders, but it was just so nice that people thought that this was um, a space that needed something new. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and how refreshing, how rewarding to have that confirmation that, you know, 
this is this business is working that this yeah. that there is a need there is a demand it's you know as entrepreneurs it's very it's challenging it's frustrating it can be lonely you know just trying to figure out things what do people want especially with fashion because you're product based and you have some wonderful wonderful products over your shoulder do you want to talk a little bit about like how do you come up with your designs like so you know like in your world if i if i'm selling you know if i'm just like selling commodities you know, I don't have to be really super creative with the product itself. Somebody else already created it. You need to be creative and everything else that goes along the lines with your business. How, mm -hmm. you know, talk a little bit about the creativity and the inspiration for your product line. So I am a solopreneur, but I have a really strong team behind me. Um, I work with everyone individually though. So it's not like you don't open my website and see all of these phenomenal people, but yeah. I have fantastic pattern makers that even though I went to school and did pattern making, like I, I don't, that's not what I do every day. Like I hire people to come in and make sure that the pants fit the shirt fit, you know, like all of those details. So, um, and then I work with local fabric suppliers who are importing. Um, a lot of my stuff is recycled polyester. It's um, post consumer plastic. It's like each top is like five water bottles out of the ocean. Yeah. And it's really cool performance material. Um, so I get that from a local guy. Um, you know, it's like pulling all of it. I'm like, I'm like the GC. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so yeah, we, but I do sketch the designs and do the initial concepts myself. And basically, I, I it was pretty easy for me. Um, Every time I walked into a golf shop, everything was a polo collar. And I did wear my polo collar today because ours, we just put a little lace on it. Like my whole, like, I'm not trying to like totally drastically change the way golf looks. I'm just trying to yes. offer a feminine perspective. Um, I think that it's dominated. I know that the dominant customer for golf is male. And so we have that sportswear athletic look and we have you know nike and adidas and things where they take their basic body that sells so well for the men and then they kind of size it down for women but the women's market isn't so big so they don't really make it fit for women where it's so like this is a women's based brand and i've had people ask me if we're going to do men's wear and i'm like i don't see the point <laughs> so that's not who i'm talking to um but yeah. Yeah, so right behind me is, this is what's manufactured here in Chicago. When I worked at Betsy Johnson, I um, my first, first job, because my degree was in advertising and I knew how to use like Photoshop and Illustrator. Yeah. She put me in charge of working with her on the prints. And so we would buy vintage prints or at least little swatches from the 1940s and I would scan them in and recreate the floral pattern that was used. And then we would recolor. So when I launched this, because golf is so pattern driven and not always my favorite patterns, I went and I just took the flowers and I started there. I started recreating. And that's where my artistry really lies. Um, it's the color and the merchandising. Yeah. And then um, just this last winter, so like, calendar year from yeah. um i found a, this company where they make everything to order and so then we put the prints like on the hoodies things like that just to have more seasonality and then also offer a layer because i'm here in chicago and golf yeah it's like really hot for a few months but there's a lot of weather variability so yeah. in order to expand the line a little faster i started using some of these print on demand companies um, but we do like embroidery and that's kind of all the, all the graphics and the flowers, things like that are on the, on the pieces. Awesome. So if uh, m like my sister's a huge pickleball player, uh, you know, leisure, yeah. so it's not just golf. I know you cover tennis. So yeah. it's kind of like a lifestyle wear, if you will, is that, is, am I close? Totally. I think the problems that women had on the golf course are the same that women have universally in most of the um, like there are no pockets on things. Um, so like all the dresses, all the skirts, all the shorts have lots of pockets. It's kind of one of them. We actually had to take out some pockets. There were too many, like you'd start putting stuff in and then you couldn't remember <laughs> which one you put it in. Right, right. Um, but yeah, like, so we, there's still like some universal problems, but generally speaking, this is performance wear. So you don't put it in the dryer. 
you can sweat in it. It will dry quickly while you're on, while you're wearing it. So if you're going to pickle or paddle or tennis, but then you want to go to the grocery store or you want to go run errands all day, you know, whatever you, whatever's coming up. I have a lot of friends that wear this stuff for like their children's parties because they're going to be pouring sweat at some point. I mean, that's just the way it goes. So yeah. um, another, like, this is the, this is like the ruffle collar shirt. This was the first piece. And this like, I'm like, I don't even know where the camera is. The idea yeah. was that instead of it being a polo collar, it would be something more feminine. But I have a lot of friends that wear this under their blazers and stuff for work because it's comfortable, right. soft, and it's made here um, of recycled fabric. Well, that is phenomenal. What I love here is like, you know, we always love uh, Damon talking about like that ideal customer, you know, yeah. that, those those soulmates, if you will. Speaking of soulmates, man, Gail dropped a comment. Damon, I don't know if you want to pull that up. OMG, OMG. I love the Betsy Johnson story. How cool is that, right? I love that you aren't just, uh, what was that? Just, Making uh, male clothes pink. Yep, 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 <laughs> exactly. So, hey, the little bravo to you there. We've got Nicole here. Not having enough pockets is the worst. And yeah. she's, she's a big tennis mom, of course. And so that is that is fantastic. So, Ellie, let's go here. So you're a solopreneur. Like you said, you have a, a wonderful resources, uh, wonderful resources. You have a nice support system around you building up your business. You know, it takes a village. Now, you decided to reach out to iMac to uh, they had some programs, uh, some things going on. Talk about like what inspired you? How did that connection come about? So that was a really cool story, too. Like my friend and my pat, my first development pattern maker, Social, she works here in Chicago. She's um, the Chicago pattern maker, I think is her handle. And um, she just texted it to me. I think like the moment it went up, it went live because they were like, you we just launched it. You already turned an application in because I was like, oh, my God, I need that. <laughs> like, was, um, I had no idea that it had just gone live. She just texted it to me and it was like, you, it, I'm trying to remember exactly, but you had to apply for a grant that right. would help you in like one of four areas, I think. Right. Um, right. And for me, it was so I was like SEO getting my website out there, that whole thing was new, mm -hmm. so new. And I was new to it. And that was, um, so that was where I applied. So it spoke, so it came from a referral. It spoke your language. So Cameron, just share a little bit with everybody. So, uh, you know, IMEC again. So if the manufacturing extension partnership is new to somebody, you off offer also, you have a deep, deep bench of subject matter experts at IMAC. I think 50 strong. Michelle's here. Damon, we know it. we've had numerous IMAC yeah. quotes on them. You know, Paula, Simone, we know uh, Emily Lee's own, uh, you know, our dear friend, she's moved on to uh, greener pastures, I guess. We have Michelle, Zer uh, Melissa Zerbo. Michelle was with us today. Uh, David Belay is just the incredible director. And we, yeah. could, uh, Jacqueline, uh, Melissa Baza, you know, a great, great team at IMAX. So Cameron, just share a little bit, like what are some of the resources? And then can you talk about the program that Ellie signed up for? So yeah, our day-to-day -day team um, is helping manufacturing across the state, um, providing solutions. And some of the solutions that Ellie mentioned, um, like uh, improve your operations, lead your company, grow your business, focus on people. We also do weekly webinars. Sometimes I'm hosting those. Nice. Uh, we also have a vast uh, information like website, blogs, white papers, and more. Um, the grant that uh, Ellie took place in, this is uh, in partnership with Cook County called the Cook County Manufacturing Reinvented Grant. Uh, this grant op offers opportunities like, like I said before, uh, improve your operations, lead your company, grow your business, um, focus on people. And any Cook County manufacturers can apply and learn more about this grant. Um, mm -hmm. and that's on our website. Absolutely, and we'll and I dropped right. uh, I dropped a link in the chat <clears> box. <throat> so if you get a chance, go to IMAC. That's IMAC Illinois. Yeah, and the Manufacturing Extension Partnership. There, they have all sorts of incredible resources. Mm -hmm. If you're coming to us outside of Illinois, boy, check out your local. Go your local. Again, they are super incredibly. Just what a great support. Yeah. So Ellie, you reach out to them, you go through the process, you apply. Can you, and so for a shameless plug or a spoiler alert, you and I came together and boy, what an mm -hmm. honor, what an absolute gift uh, working with you for the past few months. But talk about what was the process like and then how did things get kicked off? So I thought 
because it said SEO, which to me is some like thing that happens in the backside of my computer. You know, <laughs> I did not. I had, I remember even reading what they kept sending over as the proposal. And I was like, I'm sure it'll make sense later. Yeah. <laughs> and, just... and, hey, and interject real quick. So the other Kurt in your life. Yeah. Kurt what with a K that? is my husband. <laughs> And your Kurt, Kurt with a C, husband, right. actually helped me with my website, unlike the other guy. So she has, so she has two Kurt's in her life. And yeah. where does where does the Kurt with a K? Where does he work? He works for Google. <laughs> <laughs> he works for Google. So how awesome was that, Damon? So yeah. All right. Uh, and God bless Kurt, great husband. And so let's let, so you figure you start figuring out this SEO thing. So what? How did things get started? And let's let's talk about our little jam session together. So, yeah, I thought that like. I was like, oh, this uh, this Kurt with a C is going to come and he's going to fix all my problems. Like yeah. the, the website's just going to run better. Like yeah. it's just going to be yeah. great. And then we got into how content actually drives traffic. I mean, like all of the, I just learned so much. I mean, it was like this. I mean, I have a binder full of just notes and th- and processes for getting things done and really just how to, if I really am going to have a, a website and run this website, like how this business grows this way. And it, it indirectly helps, you know, with all of my outreach because of the web. I mean, it's just, it's a whole snowball effect. Yeah. It was, man, did we have a good time or what? <laughs> Wait, well, we had- it is no, like you said, Ellie, it's, it, you, you really don't understand how the the interconnectivity between you know getting people that the right people to your site to buy your products if that's what they want and how that connects all the way back through SEO SEO is part of it but the content where mm-hmm. you put the content what kind of content you know and it's and and who your ideal customer is is so it, it takes well, a lot and, of pieces and- Drilling into that I- ideal customer, I thought it was hilarious because Kurt was like, "If you're, you know, do you ever use LinkedIn?" And I was like, "To find a job? I don't need a job." <laughs> like, I just was like, no, "I'm good." <laughs> like, and then, as you know, he's explaining LinkedIn and the customer that's there. I'm like, "Oh my god!" So they're not, yeah, because they're not on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're not on TikTok. <laughs> Golfers but yeah, I've got a strategy for TikTok, but I don't have a strategy for LinkedIn. You know, it was really like, was I felt like I, you know, I had built my website myself. So I thought, oh, I've got, this is not a problem. And I just really knew nothing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, well, I'm going to give you a ton of credit here, Ellie. So combination things. Number one, your website's phenomenal. I'm going to pull it up right here. So you're on Shopify. So again, so manufacturers out there, if you're like, you know, whether you've been in business for 30 years, 100 years, or maybe, uh, you know, you have a dream, you have a vision, you have a problem you want to solve, and you want to take that leap of entrepreneurship. And boy, if you're not inspired with Ellie today, man, Damon, what do we always say every week? You need to check your pulse, right? Yeah. So this is extremely inspiring. Ellie, you have done an amazing job. So you go on Shopify e-commerce shopping cart and so you've listed all of your products out and you know and as in marketing you know like nicole's with us today she talks about like it's you know marketing digital marketing has just got has become so complicated and so complex you just can't do it all it's just it's just impossible so it's great to align yourselves with different areas uh folks in different uh methods of, of expertise cameron's doing a great job with like she's certified in google and hubspot maybe you need you know if you want pay-per-click marketing or what have you but let's uh i'm going to pull up your website let's take a peek at the website let's just kind of go through you know uh I'll, let me pull it up right now so let me pull that up. there we go and then we're going to go to um bear with me half a second damon keep everybody occupied want damon why don't you sing a song while i'm pulling yeah this up? yeah that's not a good idea that's not a good idea okay no, all right. let me uh, let me present right here let me get share here we screen. go let me get share screen we'll get this going and then here we go okay how does this look there we go Okay. All right. This guys, this is Ellie Day Activewear. This is your website. Now, Ellie, I love your attention to detail, your creativity. Uh, talk about like your, you know, you how you hand selected the font and just everything about your website here. So this is like my favorite part is to play around in here. Um, sometimes getting something accomplished is a problem, but I do, I really think that um, 
the the handwriting font and like pulling mm -hmm. that that is in the brand the whole way because I do think that that is the creative spirit and that really kind of embodies it. But um, I you know I love working with the prints. Sometimes I add too many of them; <laughs> it gets a little crazy. But um, I try to keep, like this is the newest collection featured here. Um, I know it's holiday season and you know and all of that, but really I think that my customer is gets enough gets inundated with that stuff so i kind of wanted to keep this resort oriented and feeling like you know this kind of crazy crunch period will end and then we've got the whole new beginnings of the new year coming yeah. um tried to make it a little bit easier to navigate like golf in one section tennis in another but um the line is designed that Given, I mean, some country clubs have restrictions on lengths and things, but for the most part, most of these items are designed to be able to wear on the golf course or the tennis courts. They're not too short. They're not too long. They're just, but you know, all of that is like height dependent too. So there's a, I tried to give people options when they're shopping for sports specific, but I really try to get people to think about their wardrobe as fitting into their lifestyle and buy pieces that they'll hold on to and waste less and purchase less really. Yeah, that's good. That's good because, you know, you can fill up closets with stuff you wear a few times and, and if you get good clothing, it's, it's, it's good for you and the environment. Yeah. And I, the worst comment that I always get, that I, I run into someone inevitably that will tell me, Oh, I hate golf but I have to golf for work. So I have this one outfit that I wear and I'm like, that's like wearing a costume, you know, like yeah. you don't you, buying Halloween costumes. Like, you know, you just, you don't want to keep doing that. You want stuff that really rep like you feel comfortable wearing and confident wearing it. So, mm -hmm. and, to, and you know, that's part of the reason why the golf aesthetic needs to move along a little bit too, so that people don't feel like they're wearing something for someone else. Now, Ali, let's go here for a second while I'm thinking of it. So, you know, I, I thought you and I had a ton of fun. We would we were optimizing product pages, okay? And so we yeah. took a deep dive into our, our RICs, right? Remember those ridiculously important keywords? Talk a little bit like when is, now that you're an SEO expert, talk a little bit like what was, what was a discovery for you or how do you, how are you approaching your product, your products now kind of like with that SEO front of mind? I mean, it's that adjective, you know, that has to go with what I'm selling, that it has to speak to my customer. So um, a lot of them are like, you know, we, we came up with like a hundred of them, I think that we're, we were adding in there. Um, but like preppy is one, you know, like I try to think of like, if you were going to just, just take it one step further and describe what you're looking for or describe what you want to wear. And, you know, maybe people don't, I mean, there's a lot of people that come up and tell me like, I don't like flowers. And I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have a lot of flowers. <laughs> it's like, but you know, you know what you want. Um, yeah, yeah. So I try to incorporate that just to help um, identify the brand a little bit better. Yeah, I love that. And Damon, of course, you know the example I gave my little pink running shoes with purple shoelaces, right? Yeah. And so we went there. And so, you know, instead of like, you know, just golf clothes being too broad. And again, think about your, you know, anybody out there think about your products, your expertise, you know, the line that you're trying, the keywords that you're going after. And so what we did is we started tying in like, you know, stylish fashionable, cute, mm -hmm. you know, like in, you know, female women's, you know, so we wanted to like really go a uh, niche down because, you know, Ellie's going against Nike and Adidas and, you know, uh, Dick sporting goods and like major, major players. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to find out like what keywords is, is her soulmate, that professional, the pharmaceutical rep or the financial planner. And, uh, you know, she's having frustrated searches, just finding like guys and just not really finding what, she, what, you know, a good fit for her. So we're trying to like, how do we line ourselves and match up with that person? So yeah. Ellie, let's talk about, you do a great job with video. You're on TikTok, you're on YouTube. Uh, what talk about like your video strategy and, and a little, uh, you know, we discover like, Hey, if we got more description, more details, more backlinks on your videos, that's going to be helpful. Talk a little bit about your video strategy. Well, so my video strategy is much improved since we worked together. I mean, really, I had no idea. I was like, what do you want it to do? You want me to put the links into the product? Like I was just, I, I just figured people, if they liked it, they'd go to the website, you know, like yeah. I, I was, I was stopping there and not like 
processing like, oh, hey, I'm flipping around this top. You should be able right. to just right. find that top faster. Um, but then also the, the um, what do they call it? The ranking that Google does, like the domain authority. Yep. Being able to like, I had no idea any of that about any of that stuff. Yeah. Um, so basically when I approach content for the week or the month, I have like my couple of topics that I want to talk about. Um, a lot of it is answering questions about the products, specifically fit and function. Um, I will make a lot of the videos at once and just kind of get my rack set up like I do here. And I usually just put the camera um, and I just talk and do like the subtitles and then post to YouTube I've been adding it also to TikTok. Um, and then I do my emails for the week too. And I pull out the like good little chunks and put it into the email so that my customer gets it. Um, and we kind of just move along like that. And then the, the year itself has its own flow because it's a seasonal product. Mm -hmm. So we've got our own pacing going that way too. Hmm. Well, this is fantastic. And take a look. I mean, you're getting, uh, you know, what, 1500 views here, 300, you know, 274, 700. So you're, you know, kudos to you to getting on TikTok. You're on YouTube, putting yourself out there. You're on Facebook, taking advantage of social. Now, I uh, I think, now, Damon, you and I did a, a LinkedIn little jam session a couple months yeah. ago. Ellie, I think you might have attended it. Mm -hmm. And then we had another one with a woman directly from LinkedIn. And boy, you completely wowed me with your LinkedIn profile. Talk about what you did here with your headline, your about section, and how, you know, share a little bit about the excitement you have for LinkedIn for 2023. Well, yeah. So once I was like, okay, the, everybody I want to talk to is on LinkedIn. I mean, I was even, it was kind of shocking. Like I pulled up some customer, like I have all the back end of Shopify. So I was able to like look at some customers and I was like, oh, there they are. Like, and a lot of them are on. So that yeah. was embarrassingly late to the party, but I'm happy to be here now. So we went through that webinar and I think it was the night before I was like, well, yeah. if she's going to be there and she's an expert and she's willing to take a look at this, let me give it my best shot to at least fill in the information that was relevant because up to that point, I had just been using my profile. It was like a holding place in case I wanted to try to apply for a job. You know, yeah. <laughs> For anybody out there catching this, you know, and I, and I, gosh, I, it was so funny, Ellie, you're correct. Like we, we met weekly on Mondays for the most part. And you and I met on a Monday. We had a woman, a friend of mine, Vicky from, she actually works at LinkedIn. She came in to do a LinkedIn jam session and the very, you're, and I asked, I asked for volunteers, your, yours came up and I just looked at your LinkedIn profile the day before <laughs> and here, you know, like she changed it, you know, women's wear designer with a passion for golf and tennis, slow fashion advocate, you know, right here, pursuing a license as a retail therapist, absolutely brilliant. And then when you come down here, I love what you have, you know, talking about the, you know, like, so when you're I Joe buyer, I feel like you're speaking directly to that soulmate of yours right here. Great story about your mom walking up the, the Houston Golf Open to kickstart labor. Absolutely hysterical. You know, your story and your journey on fashion. And then, you know, right here, you mentioned earlier, you had your first child and you read a book that babies sleep 18 hours a day. Great time to start my business. And here's your pandemic baby right here. So, you know, kudos to you for, for stepping up. What, what, what are you excited about for 23 as far as like, what, what, what's your intention? What are plans for you with LinkedIn now? So I am aggressively pursuing golf clubs. I am like calling these pro shops over and over. I know that the women's market is not their primary bread and butter, but I'm trying to convince them to get, to take a look, give it a chance, see if you offer a product that looks like it's made for women that is not just golf oriented, if they can actually is that these country clubs, their, their memberships have went through the roof during COVID and the pro shops are there and they have an active community shopping, but they're like, Oh, only the men buy. And I'm like, well, there's all these women coming for dinner and you're like down the hall. So, oh, yeah. you know, it's I'm just trying. Um, so I, but I'm hoping that I can through LinkedIn, I can connect with people who are like, 
hey, I'm at a country club and I would I have friends that would like to see this stuff in person because it is hard to shop online. You know, that that hasn't changed. Um, so I do. I'm just really actively pursuing these pro shops and trying to get some attitudes to change a little bit. I have definitely gotten some pushback on like um, lengths, hem lengths. Um, and, you know, I, it's not always my customer and not every country club has that customer, but I'm hoping to find the right clubs and like, and, and public places, too, not just private golf clubs, but like any like local tennis pro shop or any, anywhere that people are coming in to get their sports gear. Um, everything. And I've even tried like emailing Dick's Sporting Goods. <laughs> like Hey, and we'll, and we'll get we'll get there, right? We'll get that foot in the door. I absolutely love this line right here, Damon. Check this out. I was convinced early that I was destined to be a designer, preferring creative play without rules. I just, you know, and again, like that's the that's really the mo. That's the culture that you're building behind your brand, yeah. and I just absolutely love it. You and again, like Gail's mentioned multiple times, she loves bets. Uh, Betsy Johnson, you're talking about your experience and your experience there. So again, hats off to you. You did an amazing job knocking this down. And, you know, you've really put yourself in a great position to be connecting with folks for next year. Now, Cameron, I want to get you back in the game here for a minute. I've got, before I shut my screen down, I've got iMac. Can you just share a little bit, like what can folks expect in Illinois or, any, you know, if they're coming to us from other states, they uh, absolutely want to check out their local MEP website. But just talk a little bit about your website. You talk about like you're running webinars. What can folks expect coming on IMAX website? You're muted. Thank you. There we uh, go. Coming on IMAX website, you see a uh, solution and resources. So that's kind of what I touched on um, early on uh, with our projects. One of the ones that Ellie did, uh, Grow Your Business. So it kind of touches on uh, what projects we offer. Um, we also have um, the events page, which um, covers all our, our events that we host. Those are in person and webinars. Um, and then also on our solutions page, we offer uh, blogs, white papers, and other resources. So. Yeah. And right here, I just want to point out women in Illinois manufacturing, building your brand right here next, uh, looks like December 6th at 1130 central time. So again, guys, you know, check out uh, IMAC. You want to go to their events page. They have all sorts of wonderful, look at this, you know, guide to successful branding. I know Cameron, we're working on doing some webinars on, on the marketing side. We're lining up some speakers for you guys next year. Here's strategic planning for your organization. So lots of exciting opportunities here for manufacturers. You absolutely want to go to IMAX website. I'm going to stop sharing, come back to everybody. So, all right. all right. So Ellie, you're doing an amazing job. You're throwing on multiple hats. You, you know, you have the humility. A lot of folks, you know, my entrepreneurs, manufacturers, they just head in the grindstone, you know, down in the trenches, you know, and it's hard to like stop and like reach out for help. You reach out to IMAC. Do you, how, 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 and again, obviously shameless plug because you were stuck working with me, but how was your experience working with an MEP? Do you recommend other manufacturers working with MEPs? Just share like, what, what was that like working with IMAC? Oh, it was, it was so great. So easy. I mean, I was intimidated by some of the paperwork and everybody was like, oh, we'll handle it for you. You know, it was just, it's like the easiest thing I've ever done. And it was so seamlessly worked around, like the calendar schedule worked great getting all of the work done while we were meeting, not necessarily like a ton of stuff on the plate later. Mm -hmm. um, it was, it, but also just really helped with the forward thinking about how to like processes. Like I just really felt like it pulled everything together and I have like a game plan. Um, uh, so I really couldn't recommend it enough. I've actually sent the same link to apply that I did. I've sent it to a couple designers that I'm friends with that I'm like, Hey, this is amazing. Like you, this is what you could do for your business. This is really yeah. important. I love that. And, that's so, and I know we're coming into time. I want to be mindful of everybody's time out here, man. We're having an absolute blast yeah. as you want to connect with Ellie here on LinkedIn. You want to connect with Cameron on LinkedIn. Just great. And what an inspiration uh, these two are. So Ellie, you talk about that uh, game plan. I love that. So, you know, like you and I had that little spreadsheet going like that digital game plan, if you will, mm -hmm. what, and, you know, I, 
we were getting around about like the, you know, trying to get that calendar and like trying to get yeah. everything in that hub and getting your keywords together, getting that content, getting that scheduled. And man, it does get overwhelming. You know, like you're on TikTok, you're on YouTube. How any suggestions or advice for people? Like, how can you simplify it so it's not so overwhelming? So you can just like keep moving forward. What's effective and works? What works well for you? Well, the prioritization really helped just in terms of like taking the time to like set, okay, this is the goals and make sure those top three rocks are important and what you're getting done. Um, I do feel like systematically knowing like, okay, I'm going to make this video. If I batch them all together, even though it's a long day and it feels like kind of forced, but batching work like that for me mm -hmm. works so much better than trying to like, just kind of roll with it. Um, there are a lot of times that you do just have to roll with it. So you got to be able to move stuff off your schedule. Um, and I'm trying to think if there's an, I feel like that's kind of, it's just all about the planning. Right. It's all about the planning. All right. What does 2023 look like for LED day goals, expectations, we're conquering the world. What's it look like? Um, so I, like I said, I'm pursuing these country clubs. There's, I think, eight country clubs that are going to have the line for next year. And I'm trying to just keep that going. Um, trying to reach out to some larger type shops, things like that. And then, you know, I've got new styles coming because yeah. I like my feedback from my customers. So we've got to, you know, keep it interesting. Probably not as many golf dresses as like I love golf dresses, but turns out like the golfers really like the skirts and the tops. So we've got a whole bunch of new like skirts and tops coming out. Um, just, you know, the fun stuff. Right. Absolutely. Nice. Cameron, what's on the horizon for you? You know, fresh out of college, kicking off, you know, you've got your whole career ahead of you. You've chosen, thank you for bringing your passion, your talents, your expertise into the world of manufacturing, to the MEPs. What's exciting for you coming uh, into 2023 in your world? I think just, you know, like me and you talked about, I think last time we met is just bringing more webinars to the table, you know, making IMEX LinkedIn page more interactive um, and just kind of, you know, recharging our, you know, marketing strategy. I'm super excited and I have a lot of ideas for 2023. So I can't wait to put those into place. Well, you have a great team, you know, a big shout out to Christy Johns. She does an amazing job at IMAC. And again, every Melissa, Michelle was here today. You know, every, all of our friends yep. uh, at IMAC are just doing amazing work down in the Southern parts of Illinois. You know, we've got Cassie, Noah, I know back in Chicago, Doug. So again, up in uh, John, a couple of Johns on your team. So, I mean, you've got Ray Zagano, Ray Zagano joined IMAC. <laughs> Thank you, Damon. Ray Zagano is, is on IMAC. What boy. What a powerhouse that is. Yeah. Talk about like that's not even Hall of Fame. That's like Hall, that's Hall of that's Hall of Famer. That's not even All-Star. That's Hall of Famer right there. Yeah. Ray Zagonzo. So all right, guys, we're gonna wind down. I want to first off, I want to give I how about a big round of applause for our guest today for Ellie Day, yeah, Cameron awesome. Tunney. So guys, thank you, thank you. I know how busy you both are. We really were honored, privileged that you would spend this time with us today. Closing words, closing question for you. Ellie, I'll start with you. We talked about who was your hero when we kicked off the program. My last question for you today, moving forward, and we keep talking about 2023, who is your inspiration today? You got this wonderful product line behind you over your shoulder. You got a driving force. We talked about Kurt with a K. Who is your inspiration driving this business moving forward for next year? Maybe this is a little further than just next year, but I do love watching my daughter start to golf and play right. tennis and women in sports. I mean, I got, I was lucky enough. I went to the Cincinnati open and saw Serena Williams and she signed a tennis ball for my son and I burst into tears. I mean, I was like, there are people that are pushing sports forward all the time. Yeah. And I just, that the magnitude of importance of that is really what's inspiring wow. me. Well, man. Wow. That's cool. All right. Let's take so a cool. moment to just savor that. Yeah. What a, what a, that's how I felt yeah. after Serena. I was literally, I was like, just. I, yeah. awesome. Mostly, what a, what a, what a thrill. Like I, I got chills just hearing yeah. that. That is yeah. absolutely. And what an icon, you know, the Williams sisters are. So that was just great. Thank you for sharing that. Absolutely wonderful. Cameron, I'm coming at you with the same question, my friend, 
who or what is your inspiration moving forward for the next year? I think my inspiration is Cameron as little me, you know, like seeing how far, you know, I've come and now I'm graduating college, uh, a Gen Zer, uh, taking on iMac and, you know, powering through marketing and trying to find new ideas. So, see, you know, seeing little pictures of myself when I was, you know, smaller and coming to iMac, you know, when it was at Job's Hall, which is now at a different uh, building in Bradley, but I used to go to Job's Hall with my aunt and just seeing how, you know, far I come, I think that's, you know, been my inspiration. Very cool. Very cool. All right. We're safe, man. What yeah. you drop the mic on both man? You guys yeah, both just gave me stuff. chills with and you know what, Cameron? God bless you. We you know what? What a great answer, Damon. We I asked that every week and we've never had that type of answer. Yeah. So thank you both. The, the, those were just heartwarming, wonderful, amazing questions. I see Katie just joined us here last minute. Katie, happy Friday to you, my friend. Boy, go back and you want to absolutely connect with uh connect with Ellie here. You want to connect with Cameron. We've got two rock stars, two folks, passionate, two women in manufacturing and just really changing the world here. So, all right, guys, let's wind down. Ellie, thank you. I appreciate you more than you could possibly imagine. I was such an honor, privilege working with you the past few months. I've learned so much from you and it was just, uh, it was just a blessing. Cameron, we are rooting you on. What a great inspiration you are. What a gift you are to IMEC the IMEC team here moving forward for the, the manufacturers in Illinois. What an unfair advantage for other manufacturers in Illinois, Damon, you know? Yeah. Good Boy, stuff. All the, all the other States are jealous right now. So mm -hmm. all right, guys, we'll close out. I wish everybody an amazing, incredible weekend. Boy, be an inspiration to someone just like Ellie and Cameron were just so inspiring to us today. Go out and just be someone's inspiration. Keep crushing it. Make manufacturing great. Cause Cameron, what do we say? All the cool kids are going into manufacturing, right? We so are. thank you guys, Damon. Close us out, brother. I appreciate it. All right. I want to thank everyone for joining us this week once again for the Manufacturing E-Commerce Success Show. Thank you, Ellie, for being here. Cameron, for being here. It was awesome hosting you and being able to hear your stories and 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 this the active wear. I just love it. I love it. Building building clothes that people actually like to wear and enjoy. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, we'll be back again next week with another guest. Come and join us. See you later. <laughs>